Wayne Duggan, Remax Boulder Video Podcast. Today we have Jessica Shanahan from Premier Hi, Lending here at Remax of Boulder to uh, visit with us about a unique topic, maybe a little more unique for Boulder, Colorado, because we're talking about kitty condo loans today. Kitty condo loans are when a parent would like to buy a property for their student to live and attend, of course, the University of Colorado. So, <laughs> Jessica, tell us what um, what a kitty condo loan is in your mind. Sure. So, don't get tricked by what it's called, kitty condo, because okay. it doesn't have to be a condo. Yeah, I don't think that's an official yeah. name. It's just <laughs> I what mean, we I, call it. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, it does not have to be a condo, but the thing that it's great for is if your son or daughter is coming to Colorado and they're going to attend school here and you want to invest in this amazing market, right? Instead of having to pay rent for your child for four years. So you as a parent would be the co-signer on the loan. Your student doesn't have to show any um, income. So no income requirements for them. And they do need a credit score. Okay. So if you're planning on doing something like this, it's best to either, like you were saying, prepare a couple years in advance and have them start building their own credit or add them to one of your credit cards as an authorized user. That will typically give them a score within 30 days. Okay. And so in the old days when we were doing kitty condos, I mean, even like a cell phone bill was helpful as far as students building credit. But what's the best way to say a credit card or? I think the easiest or? and the quickest way to do it is just add them to an authorized user account, like even your target credit card, you know, just something that you use and maybe pay off monthly and they don't even need a card. <laughs> if you don't trust them with that, don't give Perfect. them that card. <laughs> so in, in today's world, I mean, parents and students looking at a place to buy instead of renting, mm -hmm. uh, often down payment's an issue. What's the typical down payment range for uh, what we call a kitty condo loan? So we can do 3.5% down on an FHA loan, and then we can do as low as 3% down on a conventional. There are some different income qualifiers with that 3% down, so probably plan for, let's say, 10% down. Okay. Interest rates are the same as they would be on a primary purchase for yourself, so you're saving money there, not buying it as an investment also. Okay, so generally 10% or under, you mm -hmm. could potentially get in, and that's opposed yep. to if it was a pure investment property, maybe you're 20 or 25% yeah. uh, percent down, so that's not exactly. too bad at all. And so um, you said terms like interest rates tend to be mm -hmm. about the same as Yeah, as interest other... rates are the same, right? So based on, you know, loan to value and credit score is what we look at, but it, you won't have a hit for anything else. Okay, and students, um, sometimes they may not want a house, so this this program available though for single families and condos? Yes, okay. it is, yeah. Right. And the great thing about that is since the student is going to be living there and it's their primary residence, we don't have to worry about the occupancy ratio of a condo project. Okay. Where you do worry about that occupancy ratio if you're purchasing as an investment. Okay, that's the word, what, non-warrantable is non what they call it? So it doesn't sound like, non-warrantable sounds like maybe the refrigerator's not under warranty or something, but non-warrantable loans just means maybe the owner occupancy of the condo complex isn't high enough to meet the right. Freddie, Mac, Freddie Mac guidelines. Exactly. Right? So more investors to primary residents. Okay. Any other tips for maybe a, a parent that's looking at a college condo or a college home for their child relative to financing? Sure. I mean, I can't, honestly, the credit one is the big one because okay. I have had clients come in and you know, their son or daughter has no credit and they're already under contract. So I would say just make sure that if you're, it, once you start looking at those types of things, just add them okay. and be ready for that. So a wise college parent would mm -hmm. be maybe when their child is a freshman at the University of Colorado, of course, uh, of course. that they come in and see you and start to plan for the year ahead right. for when they're in their second year, because I think they still have to live in the dorm the first year. But it'd be a good idea to start planning that uh, credit and figure out how they're going to do it. And how about uh, rental income from roommates? Do, is that allowed to count or the, the parent has to qualify on their own? So there is an option to get that done. We can use um, rental income if we can show a history. So let's say you were renting, you know, your son or daughter was a sophomore and okay. they were renting a house and then you decided to buy a house instead. If we, if one of those roommates is moving with them, okay. we can show that 12 month history, then we well, can use that okay. rental income. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a bunch of ideas that uh, could help some uh, students and their parents to get involved in investment real estate in yeah. Boulder, Colorado. Jessica, thank you for being here. Thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne Duggan, Remax of Boulder Video Podcast, signing off.